بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my brothers and sisters, can I kindly ask, inshallah, before we start, that please no one to be recording. Please. Wallahi, I beg you from my heart, no one to be recording. Let your heart record, inshallah. Inshallah, tonight, let your heart record and don't worry about your phone recording, inshallah. Um... Also, I, 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 it's very, very important that you give me your undivided attention. I'm feeling a bit rusty, I haven't given a talk in a while. So I'm feeling a little bit rusty, but what I want to talk about tonight is actually quite important. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives me the ability to say what I need to say in the best possible way, inshallah. So my brothers and sisters, tonight, <clears throat> we want to try our best to keep things simple. Simple, but wallahi, very deep and very, very important. And tonight, it's very important that you don't worry about who's not here. Don't worry about who you think needs to hear this particular message. Tonight, trust me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected whom He wanted. He gathered them here tonight, inshallah, so that we, you and I, can both benefit. Well, I'm asking Allah to make things easy for me. So my brothers and sisters, let's, let's start from the beginning. Wallahi, tonight's lesson, if you take 50%, just 50%, if you take 50% of tonight's lesson, bi'idhdillahi ta'ala, wallahi, it will last you a lifetime. And I believe personally that it's the core and the foundation of your deen. So let's start at the beginning. What is Islam? And if you're thinking, brother, look, I'm already Muslim, I don't need to hear this. You actually need to hear this more than the non-Muslim. Because today, in the 21st century, what's happening in our time is an attack, not on Islam per se, but I swear by Allah, it is an attack on the very aqidah and the concept of this faith. So don't be fooled. You will not be attacked, why are you Muslim? This, this attack is too old, but they will come in such a way. And inshallah tonight I will use examples that be if the lay will shed some light. So let's start at the beginning. What is Islam? What is Islam? Today Muslims are falling all over themselves to try and display Islam, represent Islam in a manner that he thinks is best. My brothers and sisters, tonight we need to come to understand that you and I as Muslims, we are asked to do only what Allah and His Prophet want. And this deen is only based on what Allah and His Prophet want. This deen is not based on what you think and how, and what I think and what you feel and how I feel. Islam, my brothers and sisters, means one thing and one thing only. Islam does not mean peace. Many Muslims today tell you, brother, Islam means peace. And I understand it comes with a good heart and a good intention. But this is the problem that when you don't have alam, when you don't have understanding, and you speak purely of desire, you end up hurting yourself Hurting others, confusing others, and more worse than all of it, worse than all, actually confusing yourself. So many Muslims today will tell me, listen brother, Islam means peace. And we say this, <clears throat> we say this with a big smile on our faces, especially when we're around non-Muslims. You know, when you're around non-Muslims, things can actually get, gets a bit heated sometimes, you know, it gets a bit tense. So many Muslims will tell you that, brother, Islam means peace thinking this is appealing to people. Whereas in reality, Islam does not mean peace. Never has meant peace, never will mean peace. I'm not saying Islam is not a peaceful religion. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this. But the word Islam, and this is the problem, if the very definition of my deen, I'm getting it wrong, what does it say about the rest of it? If I have a wrong understanding of the very name of my faith, did you understand why a lot of us are confused? 
So let's go to the very, very beginning. What does Islam mean? Who's going to help me out tonight? Uh -huh. The word Islam means submission. And wallahi, tonight's lesson is for Muslims and non-Muslims. Islam means submission. To who? To what? To my desire? To my dad? To the area? To social norms? Pressures? Pee pressure? Submission to who? To what? You as a Muslim, you need to understand that this Islam means submission. To what? To who? To Allah. So Islam means submission. To who? To what? To Allah and His Prophet and my dad and my mom and the area and the boys. To who? To Allah and His Prophet only. Period. Islam is submission. How much submission? 10%? 50%? 80%? When I like it? When it suits me? When it feels right? When it's acceptable in my community? When? And how much? Allah says, all. Completely. Islam is submission. Full submission. Complete submission. To who? To what? To Allah and His Prophet only. Does Allah need me? No. Does Allah need my salah? No. Does Allah need my conviction in my faith? No. Does Allah, Allah is free from anything and anyone. We have to understand. Tonight may seem a bit harsh, but wallahi, I don't intend on being harsh. But we need to understand because sometimes we need to go back to basics. Does Allah need anyone? No. Does He need anything? No. So Islam is submission completely, fully to who? To Allah and His Prophet. But who is this Allah and why do I have to submit to Him? Who is this Allah? What is this Allah? And why do I have to submit to Him? Allah Azza wa Jal is the King, the Creator of the heavens and the earths. Allah is the Creator of all things, that which you see and that which you don't. He is the one who created all things, the sustainer of all things. The, he is the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the all-knowing, the all-wise, the all-powerful, the almighty. Who is this Allah? Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the one that knows what you and I don't know. He sees what you and I don't see. He's in control of all things. Nothing, nothing escapes Allah. Nothing. He is in complete, full control. Allah doesn't get tired. Allah doesn't get sleepy. Allah doesn't get restless. Allah doesn't get bored. Allah never does Allah not know what to do. He is in complete control. You and I have accepted this Allah, this Creator, we have accepted Him to be the all-knowing, almighty, all-powerful. This is Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the earths. He created me. Now, I have submitted completely and fully to Him. This is Islam, ABCs. We're trying to keep it simple tonight. Keep things simple. And I'm going to come back to non-Muslims. Because you and I sometimes, in trying to convince the non-Muslim, we skip the very basics of Islam. If you have not established Allah with the non-Muslim that you're talking to, anything you speak to them about after, it's, it's really, it's insignificant. It doesn't matter anymore. Because the very essence you've missed. So Islam is submission completely and fully to Allah, the creator of all things, to Allah and His Prophet. Not because we simply like His Prophet, not because His Prophet happened to be an Arab and most of us, no, 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 no. His Prophet because He chose His Prophet. And it's not just Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, simply because, well, you know what, we have a liking towards Him. No, 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 no. Why Rasulullah, why Him? Him because Allah told me Him. Does that make sense? 
Him because Allah chose him. Islam is submission. Those people that submit, those people that submit, they're called what? Muslims. You with me? Those people that have submitted completely and fully to Allah and His Prophet, what's their name? They're Muslims. Meaning, He has submitted. Aslam, He's a Muslim. Aslam, He submitted. To who? To Allah and His Prophet. Is that pretty clear so far? Yes? It's not confusing so far? Aha. So now it's pretty straightforward. That Islam means submission to who? To what? To Allah and His Prophet. How much? Completely and fully. Those people that submit to Allah and His Prophet fully, these people are called Muslims. Now these people that submit to Allah and His Prophet fully, these people will find rest and peace and happiness and tranquility and, 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 and they will find all of this in their lives if they follow Allah and His Prophet how Allah Azza wa Jal wants it. Does Allah need me? No. Can you force someone to be Muslim? No, you can't. Allah makes it very clear in the Quran, la ikraha fid deen, that there is no compulsion in religion. You can't force people to be Muslim. You can't force people. You can't. The hearts of people are in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the problem that when you force something onto someone, if this person hasn't accepted Allah, it's going to be hard for him. Everything after this is going to struggle with it. Because he or she, they themselves, have not yet accepted Allah. And the reality is, is that if you haven't accepted Allah, everything after this is difficult. It's difficult. So, Allah says there's no compulsion in religion. Contrary to even what a lot of Muslims believe. Does the whole world have to be Muslim? No. Did Allah ever say the whole world has to be Muslim? No, never did. Did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he try to make everyone Muslim? No. What was his job and the job of every believer after him? The job of every believer is to simply portray the message of Islam. To take the truth to every corner of the world. If people accept, Allahu Akbar, Ahla wa Sahla, they save themselves and inshallah they will save their families from hellfire. And if people reject, if people reject, Habibi, people rejected in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, if people reject, does this mean we can't live with them? Does this mean we can't work with them? Does this mean we can't coexist and that we can't get along? Never in the history of Islam has this ever happened. With the exception of Mecca and Medina, Muslims have coexisted with non-Muslims since the very beginning of Islam. So, there's no compulsion in religion. Allah is not forcing anyone to be Muslim. Allah is not forcing anyone to be Muslim. Allah is not twisting Rasulullah. No one is twisting anyone's hand to be Muslim. And why am I focusing on this so much? Why? Why am I insisting on this? Because you and I as Muslims need to understand that number one, Allah doesn't need me. Number two, I wasn't forced to be Muslim. Islam is a decision that who made? I made. You made. Islam is a decision that I've made. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the King. He's the Creator. He's the All-Knowing, All-Seeing. And this Allah has sent me a Prophet to teach me and show me what he wants, when he wants it, how he wants it. Now me and you, you and I, we've accepted that look really at the end of the day, bro. And the simple things, I can't get it right. Simple, simple things, I can't get it right. I've accepted Allah as my creator. I know, I know that he's the creator of all things. Anything that comes from Allah now, anything that comes from Allah, is a good or bad I know it seems like simple questions, but wallah, you have no idea what's happening outside, man. Forget outside, wallah, some of us even in our own hearts. My brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal, 
Is he pure or not? You might think, why is he asked? Because we need to renew our faith in Allah. Allah is only pure. And he only accepts that which is pure. Allah is only pure. And he only accepts that which is pure. Does Allah know any does Allah know all things or not? Yes. Does Allah contradict himself? My brothers? Does Allah make mistakes? The one that created the heavens and the earth and the stars and all that. Does this creator that created this majestic world, does he make mistakes? Does Allah get things wrong? Does Allah overlook things? Hasha lillah. So now when Allah brings down a sharia, when Allah brings down a set of rules, do's and don'ts, halals and harams, rights and wrongs, limits and boundaries, does Allah make mistakes in them? When Allah sends this down to humanity, is this from his anger or from his love? Which one is it? It's from his wisdom, from his love. That Allah wants this believer to prosper in this world and in the hereafter. So Allah didn't leave the human being to wander around, suss things out. Wallah, try, taste, see how you go. No, 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 no. Allah from his infinite rahmah and wisdom and mercy. He didn't allow the Muslim, you know, he, he didn't allow the, the human being to just wander around. No, no, no. Allah from his rahman, he sent down prophets and messengers and he sent them a book and guidance of do's and don'ts. And in this book, in this guidance of do's and don'ts, it's perfection. Not because I like it. Not because everyone in the area says so. It's perfection because it came from the one that is perfect. Allah doesn't make mistakes. Allah doesn't make mistakes. Now where am I going with all this? My brothers and sisters, it is very important to understand that when it comes to our deen, when it comes to our Islam, when it comes to our Sharia, ah, Allah Azza wa Jal is not interested in your thoughts and your opinions and my thoughts and my opinion. Because this is not Islam. This is not submission. As a Muslim, I submit completely and fully to Allah and His Prophet and His Deen. And my job and your job, after accepting Allah to be who He is, to submit and submit fully. This deen is not open for negotiation. This deen is not open for your thoughts and my thoughts. Please, please stay with me. This deen, my brothers and sisters, is not, never has been, and be, the, never will be a topic that is open for discussion. Because then this is not Islam. Call that anything else, but please, for the love of Allah, don't call it Islam because you're confusing yourself and you're confusing others. Islam has already been complete and perfected by Allah to His Prophet. Today I have perfected and completed your deen. Allah says today, speaking to Rasulullah, this is on his hajj, his farewell. He, towards the end of his life, his prophethood is coming to an end. His life is coming to an end. 23 years of Quran coming down, revelations, ayat, ahadith, deen, 23 years. Jibreel coming up and down, up and down, battles, divorces, ins and outs, and learning and teaching for 23 years. Now he does hajj at the last year of his life, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Things are now coming to an end. They're coming to a closure. He feels it. They're feeling it. And even the ayat of Quran are also starting to seal it off now. 
Aliyoma, now Allah is speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers. Who? The Muslims. Who's the Muslim? The one that submitted. To who? To Allah and His Prophet fully. Allah is speaking to them. Aliyoma akmaltu lakum deena. Today I have perfected your religion. I have completed it. I have bestowed my bounties and my blessings upon you. And I have chosen Islam as my way and my path. Islam as my way and my path. If you don't like it, that's fine. Find something else. Find something else. Brother, how can you say that? Because this is Allah's deen. And there is no room in Allah's deen. Not for me or a million like me. Not only to come and play, but to even have an opinion. Allah's not interested in your opinion. This is my deen. This is my way. This is my path. This is my book. This is my prophet. You cannot, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you argue, you cannot enter Islam, so you cannot enter paradise except through these two. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam again, when he was leaving, he looks at the companions and he says to them, I leave you with two things. Two things. Look, many things will come in your life. Speak to the sahabas, imagine us. Many things will come. Trials and tribulations and fitan will come and differences of it. And, and, and confusion will definitely be there. But what's the solution? He says, I leave you with two things. So long as you hold on to these two. So long as you hold on. Not you discuss them. Not while you talk about them. Not while I, you know, now, now today, Dean, Dean, forgive me, my brothers. Dean has become what? Even amongst religious. Uh, you know, I hate the word religious because really, who's religious? Really? Actually, who determines who's religious? Tell me. Have you ever noticed that? Who determines who's religious? Tell me who. Uh -huh. so, 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 even amongst religious brothers, Dean has become what? Tell me, tell me. It's become conversation. Now, brothers sitting on a dining table, family sitting at dinner, talking about Dean like it's what? Wallah, he's speaking about Dean like it's the footy. Now these guys, he'll sit and then he'll speak about Dean like Dean is based on how he feels. What are your thoughts? What do you think, bro? Nah, you know what? Wallahi, man, Allahu A'lam, but I don't think that's right. Habibi, when you say that, I don't think that's, you know, that, no, I don't think that's right. What's that based on? Please, please, for the love of Allah, Again, just between you and yourself, honestly, when you say to me, brother, I don't think that's right. What's that based on, bro? What is it? Thoughts? Feelings? What, 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 is, is, it, is it just a vibe? What is it? This is now the deal of Allah? Thoughts and feelings? We're sitting down at the cafe. Let's speak about deen. Let's speak about differences of opinion. Let's speak about mashayikh and ulama. Is this Islam? Thoughts and feelings? He says, I leave you with two things. So long as you hang on to them. So long as you grab on to them. His words, not mine, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, you will never go astray. Never. Never. He says, I leave you with the Quran and my family, Ahl al-Bayt, and in another narration, a weaker narration, he says, I leave you with the Quran and my sunnah. And his family is on the sunnah. Yani. What's his family on? Some other deen. He says, so long as you hang on to them, you will never go astray. 
My brothers and sisters understand something very deeply. The deen of Allah, the science of Islam is not like the science of anything else. You see, any other science with the exception of Islam, it only gets better and it strengthens with time. Knowledge, science, new research, new materials, new instruments, doors open, technology, except the only exception is the deen and the science of Islam. The deen and the science of Islam only weakens with time. The less men in the narration, the stronger it is. The more you go back in ulama, the more you go back. Those that were close, the more you go back, the more pure, the more authentic it is. Are you with me? Have I lost you now or what, what's... I see some faces. Uh... Why am I saying all this? Why is this all important? Why do Muslims do what they do, my brothers? Because now there's an attack on Islam. And the attack is not to make you leave Islam. It's more, more cunning. The attack is to make you yes, doubt Islam. To doubt, not Allah, We've established God exists. No, no. But to make you doubt the laws of Allah. Why? But why do we have to do this, brother? What, what, uh, uh, why can't we do it like this? Are you with me or not? Are you with me? But wh 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 why, why, brother? Like, how, how come... Why did the Prophet of Allah say that? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, how, how, how come? But brother, but no... But there's better ways around it. Is this Islam? Is this submission? What's Allah looking for? Submission. To who? To what? To Allah and His Prophet. Allah wants the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is not looking for innovation. Allah is not looking for innovation. Allah is not looking for, you know, five, six people to sit at a coffee table and come up with this new amazing way of doing things. Allah is not looking for that. Allah is looking for obedience, submission to Allah and His Prophet to do exactly what the Prophet did, how he did it, when he did it, where he did it, exactly like him. The closer you are to Him, the happier Allah Azza wa is with you. Allah is not looking for innovation. Allah is not looking for this wow, this you beaut idea. Anything that's going to come to you after his prophets, it's only shaitan. It's only shaitan. And it starts off amazing in the beginning, but the end of that road is to take you away from Allah Azza wa and his prophet. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Allah says in the Quran, that say if you... Allah says, say that if you really love Allah, then what? فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Follow him. يعني تِنَتِي Everything he did, you follow him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how you show Allah love. This is how you show Allah love. We need to understand, my brothers, that our deen, our halals and our harams and our rights and our wrongs are there because Allah put them there. And that's where the conversation stops. Right there. Right there. Today Muslims are falling all over themselves, coming up with all these weird theories as to why we do what we do and why we don't do the things that we don't do, trying to appeal to the masses. That's not your job. That's not my job. Why is this halal? Because who made it? Because Allah said it's halal. And why is this haram? Why? Are you confused? Because Allah said it's haram. Full stop. 
Full stop. That's where the conversation ends. Because if you try any other method, you confuse yourself and you confuse others. So I'll give you an example. I love this example because wallah, and it's almost like as if it comes off the production line and every Muslim's got it. Why is pig haram? Wallahi, actually just today I had a non-Muslim in the car and he asked me this question. Pig, why is it haram? I've heard the funniest thing from Muslims. Brother, Eidi al Quran, Allah, it's haram because there's this worm in it, and no matter how much you cook it and how much you boil it, this worm, it's like a bacteria and you can never get rid of it. And Allah and this scientist and that. And wallahi, I'm just amazed with the things that Muslims say. My brothers and sisters, why is pig haram? Really? If you understood the very beginning of my talk, it's haram because who said so? Do I need to know why? You can, that's fine, it's no problem. But me, me, do I need to know why? Khalas, it's haram, Allah said it's haram. Habibi, he knows what I don't know. He knows what I don't know. So when this Allah, so when Allah Azza wa Jal tells me, stay away from this, is that because Allah doesn't want me to have fun? Is that because Allah doesn't want me to enjoy myself? So when Allah tells me stay away from this, is that for my betterment or not? Is that for my success or not? So why am I staying away from it? Because it has a bacteria in it? Because it's pink and its tail is like that? Some, some, some brothers think it's because of the tail. And some brothers think because it looks like, a, you know, because it's smart and because when it fell, it fell on its face and that's why it's not the funniest things I've heard. The funniest, the funniest things. Is that why pig is haram, my brothers? Is that why we, we don't eat pig? You know what the problem is with these arguments? You know what the problem with these arguments is? Because unfortunately now science, this fitna that we call science, wallah, it's a big fitna, man. Big fitna. Science and scientists are slowly replacing Allah and His Prophet. They're slowly replacing Allah and His Prophet in the eyes of many Muslims. The problem with these arguments is this. Is if I tell someone that, look, pig is haram, it's prohibited because it has a bacteria, no matter how much you cook it and boil it and babar shu, you can never get rid of it. If this brother says to me, mate, what if we can come up with a pig that we put together in the lab and we can guarantee you that there's no bacteria in it? Would you eat it? But you said we don't eat it because of the bacteria. Can I eat it if there's no bacteria in it? Habibi, if you take it to the lab or you take it to Jahannam, it's haram because Allah said it's haram. And that's where it ends. I have submitted completely to God, the Lord Almighty. He told me stay away from it, so I stay away from it. It's good. There's benefits, it tastes amazing, it's worms, dude, bacteria, doesn't matter to me. My Lord has told me stay away, I stay away. Why don't we eat it? Because Allah said so. And that's it. That's really where the conversation ends. Today, this guy that I had in the car with me, he said to me, you know, like, how come you guys don't eat bacon, eh? I said to him, because my Lord has told me to stay away from it, so I stay away from it. He said to me, is that all? I said to him, yeah, that's all. I said to him, it's not cursed, it's not like some evil animal. It's an animal like all the other animals. It's a creation of Allah. In that sense, we love and we, and in that sense, that it's a creation of Allah, he worships Allah, and it has its role in the, yeah. I mean, it has its role. But Allah has told us to stay away from it. Wallahi, he said to me, is that all? I said, yeah, that's all. He said, man, some guy once told me that he, that, that he did a sexual act in front of God, so God cursed that and did. Some Muslim, wallahi, some, some Muslim. Salam. Right? So that's, that's, that's it. It's haram because Allah said it's haram. And that's really where the conversation ends. 
That's really what that, and you need to understand, why do women cover up? Why? Because Allah said so. Why do you fast the month of Ramadan? No, because some scientists said that if you fast, it does this amazing thing to your body. And I'm sure there's a lot of amazing benefits through fasting. There's no deny. I'm sure there is. But we do what we do because Allah said so. Full stop. Full stop. Don't fall all over yourself trying to convince and come up with this amazing theory. You and I as Muslims... We do what we do because Allah said so, and we don't do what we don't do because Allah Azza wa Jal said so. He knows what I don't know. And my job as a Muslim, someone that has submitted completely to Allah, is to follow and to obey. And if I follow and I obey, whether people like it or not, you will find happiness and success in this world and in the year after. And you know what I find amazing, my brothers? You know what I find amazing? Is sometimes when you say this to people, Nah, brother, not me. I have to know. Again, this is a door of shaitan. That look, brother, and I have to know. Habibi, enta, wallah, please, Allah, da'alak, enta, ya mandis, sit down before you hurt yourself. When you accepted Allah in the beginning, you accepted Him to be the all knowing, true or not, the all seeing, the all wise, the all powerful. So when this Allah sends me something, He says to me, don't do it. I don't need to investigate after. You can, that's fine. There's no problem in you finding out the wisdom behind things. That's fine. But to question Allah. Why did Allah? Wh wh why? Why is Allah doing this? Why did Allah make this halal? Why did Allah make this haram? Habibi, enter you and I. What position are you in to do that? What position are you in to do that? What position are we in? And this same, you know, and, and again, this is what I find interesting. This same brother, every single one of us, we submit to anything and everything else, except when it comes to the things I should be submitting to with my eyes closed. I'll give you an example. Wallahi, most of us, so that I don't fall in trouble. Most of us here now, yeah, when you go to the doctor, does anyone question the doctor? Do you? You don't? Generally speaking, when you and I go to the doctor, you know when I know hey, that, where he's from, where he's been, what he, you have no idea. Wallahi, you got no clue. You go to the doctor, I don't know, I walked in, the guy's wearing a suit and a tie, he's sitting behind the table and there was a certificate on the wall, bro. What else do you want from me? What else do you want, brother? I walked in, he was in a suit and a tie, he was sitting on a nice desk, he had a nice pen, and there's a certificate, where the certificate is from, who signed it, does that university actually exist? You got no idea, nor did you check it, nor did you do your background checks. How come you don't apply your logic here? Why do we pick and choose? Why is it when he came to my health, I went to the doctor, I sat down in front of him, I told him what was wrong with me, and then he scribbled something on a piece of paper. Have you ever seen a doctor's writing? Honestly, wallahi, have you ever seen it? For the life of me, for the life of me, you know, had there not been printed writing, on, you wouldn't know what's the bottom or what's the top. You got no idea. It's a scribble. And he prescribes something to you. You have no idea what he's talking about. He's explaining it, but you're like, ah, uh, 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 yeah. And you're doing whatever. You're doing your absolute best to not look like a fool in front of him. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you got no idea what he's on about, bro. And he's trying to tell you. And he's trying to. Then he writes a prescription. You take that prescription, and then as you're leaving and you're going to the pharmacy, wallahi, you're looking at this paper because you got no idea. But you're all right with it. You're all right with it. You're all right with it. But the, the guy's a doctor. Allah, you should have seen his tie. But he had cufflinks on. Not some chat button. He had cufflinks on. So you know, the, the guy, but the guy's got money. Then you take your prescription. As you're walking to the chemist, you're looking at the prescription and you're thinking, bro, what the hell is going on here, man? Then you walk into the pharmacy Wallah, and the only guy that's better than the doctor for me is the pharmacist. 
Because you know and I know, the only thing that convinces you he's a pharmacist is what? Is the white shirt. If the guy serving you isn't wearing one, tell him, brother, please, can you call the guy in the back? Then he comes, he looks at that piece of paper that you've been looking at for half an hour, you've got no idea what's going on. He looks at it for barely a moment. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, based on what, Habibi? It was a scribble. Ah, yeah, to what? He goes, he gives you a drug, a drug. And he tells you, yeah, make sure you take this three times a day after a meal and, and, and. And you take it and you got no idea. You got no idea. None of us ever looked at the back of the packet and said, yeah, but why does it have 0.2 grams of oxymalatus? I don't know what those words are, because well, I got no idea. You don't question. And you take it three times a day after your meals. Why? Because the doctor said so. The doctor knows what I don't know. And that if I want to get better, then you need to follow the doctor's orders. Throughout the whole process, you didn't ask a single question. You didn't raise a single eyebrow. From one guy to another, you're putting a foreign object, a drug, down your throat, followed by water, with yaqeen and conviction that this is good for me. But every Tom, Dick and Harry wants to question Allah as to why he did and why he didn't. Yalla, come on, all of us now. Every person has an opinion and every person wants to question Allah as to why he did and why he didn't. But why is this like that for, brother? Convince me. Convince me, brother. Your argument isn't too convincing. Really. Really. You can't sort your own problems out. If I was to tell you, pick a number between 1 and 10, you wouldn't even know from which part of the brain that came from. But you have the audacity to question Allah as to why he did and why he didn't. And worse still, you have the audacity of going around promoting that you're a Muslim. Habibi, I don't know what Islam you're talking about. Because going back to the beginning of my talk, that's not Islam. Islam is complete and full submission to Allah. Complete. Allah is not interested in your thoughts and my thoughts. Allah is not interested in your feelings and my feelings. Allah is not interested in the opinion and the flow of Allah what's out on the street. Public perception. Have you believed that to democracy? That's not to Islam. The deal of Allah is complete. It's not open for negotiation. You want to make up your own rules, fine. But don't call it Islam. Don't twist and play with the deal of Allah to make it, you know, fit your whims and your desires. That's not how it works. That's not Islam. That's your own version of events. Islam is what Allah and His Prophet wants. We need to understand, my brothers and sisters, because today is an attack on your aqidah. It's an attack on your faith. Making you doubt and making you question your own faith. Muslims, forget non Muslims. Wallahi, Muslims. Yeah, but why? Are you sure? Are you sure, brother? Yeah, but that doesn't seem right. Worse, that doesn't sound fair. Wow, fair. And who made you the measuring stick of fair? Since when were you and I the ones who determine what's fair? Let me share this one ayah in the Quran. And please give me your undivided attention. Please. Wallahi, I, 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 I ask Allah that the nur of this verse enters your hearts and that you and I both understand that this topic that I've been insisting on is so, so important for your faith. You have no idea. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An-Nisa, when he was speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and please stay with me. Allah, when he was speaking to Rasulullah in Surah An-Nisa, this is our faith, my brothers. When I say I'm Muslim, then it means I've submitted fully. Not every time something comes up, oh, yeah, well, oh, look, yeah, look, you know what? We all need to sit down and discuss. We need to discuss. What does Allah say in the Quran? 
Allah speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who was he surrounded with? Who was the Prophet of Allah surrounded with? He was surrounded by those people whom Allah praised them in the Qur'an for what quality? What was the quality Allah praised them in the Qur'an for? Qalu, Samina wa ta'na. What did the companions say? They say, we hear and we obey. Not we hear and we question. Not we hear and wala, let me dwell on it for a little bit. Not wala, yeah, you know what, look, I heard. But let me go back to the boys and see how the area. No, 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 no. Qalu, Samina wa ta'na. Allah praised them in the Quran for this quality. They hear, as long as it's authentic, it's from Allah and His Prophet, then it's the absolute truth. We don't question. So Allah speaking to Rasulullah Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, Fala wa rabbika. Wallahi, where do I start with this verse, man? Allah, look how Allah starts. Allah starts off the verse. Fala wa rabbika. Allah takes an oath by himself. Wow, what a way to start. You know, sometimes you meet someone. So I come, I say, brother, what's your name? Brother, my name is Muhammad. But if you were to meet someone, tell him, I come, sister, I come, salam, tell him, brother, what's your name? Sister, wallahi, my name is Muhammad. Ooh, cuz relax, slow down, bro. <laughs> whoa, whoa, slow down. Are you with me? Allah is speaking to us. Wow, wallahi, I wish I had time, bro. I wish I had time. Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Quran, my brothers, Quran. You want to know why this topic is so important tonight? Because this is your deen. This is your aqidah with Allah. This is your faith. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ I swear by myself, Ya Rasulullah. لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ these companions, these people will never believe. Their faith will forever be incomplete. Your iman is incomplete. La yu'minun. Who's speaking? Who? Not some sheikh. These are not my thoughts and my opinions. This is your Allah speaking to you. Fala wa rabbika. La yu'minun. Hatta. Hatta. Yuhakimuka, Yuhakimuka, you ya Rasulullah, Hatta Yuhakimuka, Fima Shajara Bainahum. Allah says they will never believe, their faith will forever be incomplete until they make you, ya Rasulullah, the judge. Not in some of the affairs, not when they want, not when they pick and choose. Allah says, until they make you the judge in all of their affairs. Deen. This is deen. You want Islam? You go outside? Wallahi. But people are lost. People are confused. Wallahi, even amongst religious people. Wallahi. I don't even know. Like, like where do you draw the line anymore? Until they make you the judge, Ya Rasulullah, in. My brothers, this is for you. This is, Wallahi, today's talk, today's khutbah. Please don't think about people outside. Think about yourself, bro. Wallahi, this is why we're struggling. Why, why are our marriages failing? Why? You know why? Because the truth is, Allah and His Prophet are not the judge in all of our affairs. They're the judge in. Some of our affairs, in the affairs that I like, in the affairs of when it's going to suit me. Are you with me? Hatta yuhakimuka, Allah says, until they make you, Ya Rasulullah, the judge in all of their affairs. Did Allah finish the verse? Please, Wallahi, I beg you. Surah An-Nisa, go home today, Wallahi, just read the verse. What an amazing verse. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Until they make you the judge in all of their affairs. 
ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت واو 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 not only ya rasulullah are they to make you the judge in all of their affairs but they are to find no difficulty no hardship no bitterness in whatever your judgment is are you with me when allah and his prophet declare a matter not only are you supposed to take it, Allah, no, no. Allah wants more. Not only are you supposed to take it, but you are supposed to feel no hardship, no bitterness in whatever the verdict is. There's no haraj. There's no, yeah, all right, but no. If this was the order of Allah and His Prophet, and this is the verdict of Allah and His Prophet, then there is no bitterness. Did Allah finish it there? Who knows how the verse finishes off? Who? who? Barakallah. Allah says, not only do they have to love the verdict, but we go back to the very beginning of my talk. Where are you? وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, not only do they have to make you the judge, not only do they have to accept whatever your verdict is, not only do they have to love your verdict, but they are to submit 50%? 80%? How much, my brothers? Full submission to Allah. This is deen. Allah says in the amazing verse in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ What is it? أَلْ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Allah says in the Quran, please stay with me. That it is unbefitting, Allah says, it is unbefitting for the believing man and the believing woman that when Allah and His Prophet have declared a matter, that the believing man or woman should have, should have an opinion on the issue. Whose words? The din of Allah is not a game, my brothers. The din of Allah is not a conversation. Wallah. It's not like the World Cup where we sit down and we speak about this player and that player and this team and that team. The din of Allah is complete. It's perfected. My job and your job is to submit fully. Wallahi. And please take these words very carefully because I know it's going to open a lot of doors of fitna for some people. I would just rather someone say to me, look, the deen of Allah is perfect, but I'm just weak. I can't do this act of worship. I'm not giving you excuses, but I would rather you say, look, the deen of Allah is perfect, but I just can't do this currently right now, but inshallah I'm working on it. than to twist and play with the deen of Allah so that it suits your whims and your desires. This deen is based on submission, obedience, my brothers. That when Allah says jump, we say what? How high? And don't let this door of logic... Now, but brother, you know what? I'm thinking about it logically. Habibi, wallahi, you can use logic to establish Allah in deen, you can use logic, yani if there's a non-Muslim, we say to the non-Muslim that he can use his logic to establish the existence of God. But once you've done this, once you've established the existence of God, and you've established that Allah Azza wa Jal exists, and that he has a book and he has a prophet, 
We now tell you to put your logic where? Where do you put your logic? Habibi, put it aside. I'm not disrespecting it. But in Islam, it's no longer logic. It's submission. And Ali bin Abi Talib says an amazing thing. He says, if Islam was based on logic, then one would wipe under his sock and not where? Not on top of it. Submission. Why do we make tawaf around the Kaaba seven times? Anyone know? Does anyone know? Because the scientists said that this star and this moon, and that if you throw the stone like this, we eat our Quran, if you use a boomerang, and if you. You know how many brothers and sisters, wallahi, I'm not joking. You know how many brothers and sisters don't even get to enjoy their Hajj or their Umrah. He's looking at the Kaaba. Moment in time, moment like a milestone in your life. Yeah, but brother, why are they walking around anti-clockwise? Like, why aren't they walking around the other way, bro? Ya Allah. Because why is it seven times? Like, why don't they do it five? Submission. Habibi, wallahi, just obey. Again, now some brothers and some, yeah, but brother, wallah, like, this is very hard for me. So I'll give you guys an example. When a woman, when her husband dies or she has a divorce, they have a time where they call the adda. Basically, what's the English translation of adda? Like a cooling off, yeah, but it's not a cooling off period. It's not like she was, she was, she was out of war zone or something. Oh, I need to catch my breath. But yeah, no, it's, it's like a cooling. Basically, that when a woman's husband dies or, yani, or if she wants to have a divorce, there's, if her husband dies, it's four months and ten days. And if she wants to have a divorce, I think it's three cycles, like three monthly cycles, where she's not allowed to remarry, she's not, right? Like she has to be in seclusion, she, she has to be in her home, right? If I tell you how many times, yeah, but why, brother? But why? Four months and ten days? What is this zulum, bro? What is this oppression? Does Allah oppress my brothers? But why? Why four months and ten days? Why does she have to wait three months? Why is it three periods? Why? And then brothers, no brother, because some scientists said, and actually, actually this, is a real, this is a real study that I came across. I found it interesting. Interesting, but I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I actually found that quite interesting that when a man and a woman interchange fluids, right? When they're intimate, fluids interchange. Apparently that the, that the male's fluids leaves like a pattern. It leaves like a trace within a woman. And scientists say, genuinely, scientists say that it can take up to three months for the trace of that fluid to disappear. Now that's interesting. But is that why women have to wait three months? Is it? Why do they have to wait three months? And if that sister knew what was good for her, she would what? She would wait the three months. So some brothers say, so then the sister, sometimes she, she gets smart. Yeah, but, uh, brother, I haven't slept with my husband in six months. So I already know that law doesn't apply to me. Here we say, sister... She's divorced now, so albi uh, inayi. You may be an exception, but that's not how Sharia works. When Allah brings down a law, it applies to everyone. So even if you haven't been intimate with your partner, with your husband, uh, you still have to wait the three months. Yeah, but why? That's stupid. Watch, watch, watch. Wallahi, I'm actually mentioning this for a reason. Uh, Sister, when you're driving your car and you're on the road at 3 o'clock in the morning and there's no one on the road, it's only you, and you come to a red light, do you stop or do you go? Brother, what's that got to do with the question I'm asking you? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. There's no one on the road. I'm driving my car and I get to a red light. Do you stop or do you go? 
What, are you confused, bro? Well, you guys done, 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 done that traffic laws? All of these guys go. <laughs> do you stop or do you go? Generally, you stop. But we don't want the generally, brother, because I'm a chauffeur, and I know the go, and e the al Quran. I looked around, and there's no one. So if I was to stop, brother, wallahi, I can't for... No, you stop. Even though you're not a danger to anyone, and no one is going to be harmed, but the law is the law. You stop. And you have no problem stopping at the red light, do you? But I have problems with Allah and His verdict. Whatever Allah has said to us, my brothers, we do. And whatever He's prohibited us from, we stay away from. Whether we understand it or we don't understand it. Because we're Muslims and we have submitted to Allah fully. Now, I'm ending. Trust me, I'm ending. It's been long. I'm ending. This does not mean we can't question to understand the wisdom behind things. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked Allah in the Quran, he says to him, Oh Allah, show me how you give life to the dead. Ibrahim alayhi salam in the Quran, he says to Allah, what? Ya Allah, show me how you give life to the dead. So what was the next question from Allah? The very first thing after the question, what was the first thing Allah said to Ibrahim? Who knows? Wait, wait. Uh, uh, the first thing Allah says to Ibrahim, Ibrahim, don't you believe? Are you questioning? Are you doubting? What did Ibrahim say? He says, no, Ya Allah, I believe fully. I don't doubt you at all. Walakin, but to strengthen my iman. I'm not doubting you, Allah. I know you can do it. But I want you to show me to strengthen my faith in you. Then Allah tells him, grab the birds and take them to the four hills and the mountains and why and call them. And, 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 and. So there's no problem in questioning to understand the wisdom behind something. To strengthen your faith. But don't ever question Allah and his prophet. Don't. If it's authentic, you know that it's pure. It's only good for me. Allah will never harm me, no matter how difficult it is for me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who obey. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our faith in Him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu.